So after a big rainstorm, got about five inches right here and at least an inch throughout the entire crawl space. Some areas deeper than others. So I just got back from Lowe's and bought this Zoller pump, which I plan to install half horsepower, 60 gallons per minute. So I'll end up installing this in the crawl space. And this idea, a couple other people have done this online, drilled holes, about half inch holes in the side and a little bit smaller in the bottom into this five gallon bucket. And then I've got the sump pump right here with the float switch on it, ready to go. For a temporary discharge, we're gonna use this flexible uh, temporary discharge hose onto a male fitting here under the threaded end. This is one and a half inch piping. Okay. Again, so this is just temporary just to get the water out. Of course, once you actually install it, you need one of these. This is a check valve, with a threaded ending, a threaded fitting right here. That's gonna get screwed into the sump pump and then I'll hard pipe it with PVC out into the front yard where it slopes away from the house. Oh yeah. Here, we can see. So I'm gonna try to do this just draining out the first part and then once we get going, I'll probably have to dig a little bit of a hole and get this a little bit deeper. All right, I got it rigged up. I only got it deep enough for the float switch to activate. I did put a little piece of wire on the float switch. Um, I can take it off really quickly. I'm just gonna keep a really good eye on it. I also had to drill quite a few more holes in the bucket to make sure water is getting in there fast enough. And you can see, we got this uh, pipe coming out of here. It's only long enough to make it to here. The water's clearing up a little bit. It's been going for about 10 minutes. Now you can see the hole that I dug. It's kind of hard to dig when you can't see the bottom, you can't see the dirt. For this last little bit, what I'm having to do is just plug and unplug the pump so that the water can flow into this low spot just because it takes a while for it to refill. So here we go. I'll plug it in. And you see the water slowly trickle into this hole from the rest of the house. There we go. And then I just watch it to make sure it doesn't run dry. I have the float switch still wired up. Just got back from Home Depot and bought this sump basin. It didn't come with holes pre-drilled, so right now I'm drilling quarter inch holes into it. I'm gonna keep drilling some more spread out. As I go up here. It's quite a bit bigger than the five gallon bucket and you can see them side by side so it will get quite a bit deeper into the water table which is probably a good thing and this bucket just seems a lot sturdier. Quarter inch holes, nice even pattern all the way around it. All right so uh, decided on the spot this is the deepest spot so we're gonna be digging the hole out here and then I've got the bucket right there Actually, I had to cut off some of the top of it. You can see how humid it is down here, which is not good, obviously. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be digging the hole here. And then once I get this hole dug, obviously I'm gonna move the plastic first. Dig the hole, get the dirt out that tiny little portal over there with little tiny pails, because I don't wanna have to drag it through all the duct work to get back. And then uh, we'll get the sump pump installed, hopefully, today because it's going to rain pretty hard this next week. The hole, it's getting dark, too dark to see, so finish the hole and there is the bucket that's going to fit in there. Now I just got to go at the rock. I also went ahead and got this PVC one and a half inch run done. You can see down there. I'm sweating, so it's steamy in here. But uh, that run just goes out to the front yard where the slope away, where the slope goes away from the house. So I uh, should get this hooked up tonight and be ready for the rain tomorrow. 
Okay, so now we're on to hooking up the sump pump. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get this check valve. I'll show it in a second. But check valve is gonna be off of the riser, off of there. I'll drill a little weep hole, which everybody says you need to do that for the life of the pump. And then we'll get the riser after the check valve hooked on right there. And that's it. It's actually a pretty simple project, so, I mean, simple, just arduous. This is a 1 8 inch weep hole. I don't know exactly where the height, somewhere around there. That's it. Now I know some people are probably going to comment, this is a 90 degree elbow here. It would be better if it was more of a sweeping 90 degree. So this is all they had at Home Depot that I found, so this is what it is. Put the pump in. So, there it is, sump pump. This is just the hose, uh, temporary hose. I'm just leaving it in there because it's full of water. And then a uh, riser, check valve to flow in the right direction. Got these clamps on. And now the water's going out, out front. I'm gonna go ahead and take this wire off before we plug it in. Give it you can see some a chance to set. All right, now the float switch is floating. You can hear it. There it goes. It's been going about every five minutes lately down here. That's it. Now it's time to clean up and make sure the water goes out the front. This is the pipe exiting the house. It's buried about a foot, foot and a half through here. And this is where it comes out. Got this uh, pop-up valve, and I did just put some extra gravel into the street. The real problem won't be addressed until the spring when we have a chance to address the drainage issues in the backyard. The sump pump is more of an emergency fix rather than addressing the actual issue of the drainage. So one of the summer's big projects is going to be building a big drainage system in the backyard. I'm also working on putting together a video on how I installed the electrical circuit for the sump pump um, with some of the code requirements and things like that that should be coming out at the same time as this video.